we're going to be talking about how to make the interior of headlights and this is a Nissan 370Z headlight or at least the outer area of the headlight and we'll be working on making the interior of this in this video so the first thing we're going to make is we're going to make this headlight here it has quite a bit of detail and we're just going to get started with this so we're going to go to our file this starter file will be in the description you can download it and then open it up and just start working from here so we're going to go to a new layer so we're just going to left click on a new layer we're going to go to create and we're going to choose a circle we're going to change the vertex count to 30 and press enter I'm going to tab into edit mode, do R, X, and then 90, and press enter. If you want to, you can scale this down a bit. We'll probably end up scaling it later anyway, so it's not too important what the actual size is at this point. Next, we're going to go to front view by pressing 1 on the number pad. We want to rotate this so we have a flat surface instead of having it come to a point at the z-axis. We want to have a flat surface here. So we have 30 vertices, and in order to rotate it, we're going to have to rotate it by 6 degrees. So we're going to do R, then 6, and press Enter. To get that value, you do 360 degrees divided by 30, and then you divide that in half to get 6. Next, we're going to take this and do E to extrude, right-click to cancel, and bring it out a bit. Then we're just going to scale it down some so it's like this. Then we're going to Alt right click, we're going to do E to extrude, right click to cancel and bring it back to get our base shape here. Then we're going to do A twice and we're going to do Control N to recalculate the normals. We're going to press 1 on the number pad and we're going to make this into an array and a mirror instead of having to change all the areas here. We'll just end up changing a small area and those changes will be reflected around the whole thing. So we're going to save six vertices, so we're going to save these two, and then these two, and these two. So the middle two, and then two on the sides. So we're going to do Z for wireframe, C for circle select, and make sure you get all the vertices in this area. You want to make sure you get all of them front to back. Then you can do Control I, and delete, and choose vertices. Then we're going to go to the modifiers tab, you can just middle mouse click to move this left and right. Click on the wrench, add modifier array. Change the count to 6, turn off the relative option, turn on the object option. Also turn on merge and first and last. Now we're going to tab into object mode, we're going to go to create and create an empty. So go to the bottom, choose empty. Press 1 in the number pad and then do R60 and press enter. Then select this piece again, click on this eyedropper and then choose the empty. We can now hide the empty by right clicking it and pressing H to hide it. We're going to select this piece again and we're going to tab into edit mode. We can add a, a mirror to this if we want to. We can just do control R and then do left click, right click. To add the mirror modifier, first we're going to hide this. We're going to press H to hide. We're going to select the vertex on the left side, do control L, then do delete and choose vertices. Now we're going to do alt H to unhide that. We're going to add modifier and choose mirror. We're going to move it to the top by clicking this up arrow. That's going to put it above our array modifier. Then we're going to turn on clipping and we're also going to turn on this option. In order to get these little fin type areas that are on the side, we're going to switch to face select and we're going to select this face here. We're going to do E to extrude and right click to cancel. Then you can do Alt S and bring this out and just bring it out slightly. Then we're going to do Z for wireframe. There's an extra face here. We're going to select this face on the inside, press delete, and choose faces. Then we're also going to go to the back. We're going to select this face, do delete, and choose faces as well. Now we can go to vertex select and select these two and do Q to slide them over. And that'll give it that angle it's supposed to have. 
Now we're going to go to Tools and turn on Smooth Shading. Just make sure you're in Object Mode, go to Tools, go to Turn on Smooth Shading. Then we're going to press Tab to go back into Edit Mode, because as you can see, we need to work on the shading a bit. So we're going to press K for the Knife Cut Tool. We're going to left click here, go down here, left click, go across to here, left click, and then go to the center and left click, then press Enter. We're going to Alt right click to get this edge loop. We're going to do Q to edge slide and then press E. Make sure the red dot is on the left side. This will just make sure it's even across the entire length here. If you don't have your hotkey set up, go to Mesh, Edges, go down to Edge Slide, right click on this. It'll say Add Shortcut. Just click on it, hover your mouse over this and press Q and that'll automatically set Q as your hotkey for Edge Slide. Now that that's done, you can see this edge looks a bit nicer. We're going to need to make this edge look a bit nicer as well. There's more definition to this edge on the real thing as well. So we're going to do K for the knife cut tool, left click, go to the end, left click, press enter, alt right click, do Q to edge slide, press E again, press F if you need to. Make sure the red dot's on the bottom here, bring it close, and then left click. Then we're going to do Control R, left click, and drag this up. And then left click again. To get rid of this end gone, we're going to select this vertex and this vertex and press J to join. Lastly, we're going to do K for the knife cut tool. Left click here, go down to here, left click here, press Enter. Alt right click, Q, then E, then F if you need to. Bring it over, the red dot should be on this side. Then we're going to go down here, select these two, and J to join them there. Now we're going to start working our way towards the center. To make this a little easier, we're going to apply our modifiers. So first we're going to apply the mirror modifier, and then we can get rid of this extra edge loop here. So we're going to apply this modifier in object mode. So just go to object mode and click apply. Then we're going to tab into edit mode, we're going to alt right click here and delete and dissolve edges. That edge was really only there for the mirror modifier to work. We don't actually need it at this point. So we're going to go back to object mode and then apply this modifier. And now it's all nice one mesh. So now we can alt right click on this. We can E to extrude, right click to cancel, S to scale this down. E to extrude, right click to cancel and then bring this back. E to extrude, right click to cancel, S to scale this down. That should be fine, something like that should be good. E to extrude, right click to cancel, and then bring this back out again. This extra inner one, or this inner one we're working on right now, doesn't go out as far as this outer one, so you want it to be slightly inward in comparison to that outer one. Then we're going to do E to extrude, right click to cancel, S to scale this in slightly. Then E to extrude, right click to cancel, and bring it back. At this point, we're going to turn on uh, vertex snapping, so left click here, change this to vertex. Grab it on the Y axis, hold control, and snap to this point. Next, we're going to go to create, and we're going to choose sphere. I'm going to change the segments to 30, because that's the same number of segments that we use for our circle to begin with. Then we're going to do R, X, and 90 and press enter. And we're going to do S to scale this down. We're going to get rid of most of this sphere, so I'm going to alt right click here. We're going to do delete and choose vertices. Select one of these vertices over here, control L, delete and choose vertices. Select the vertex here, control L, S to scale this out. We're going to press 1 to go to front view. One of the things we have to do is rotate this again so that we'll have a flat part on the top. So we're going to do R6 and then press enter to rotate it by 6 degrees. And now everything should line up. So we're going to scale this out a bit, but not all the way to the end. Then we're going to alt right click here. We're going to shift D to duplicate, right click to cancel, and bring this forward slightly. Then we're going to do E to extrude, right click to cancel, 
one to go to front view again s to scale this out slightly then we can do control l and then e to extrude right click to cancel and bring this back slightly just to give this more depth here and we don't need these interfaces so we're going to press delete and choose faces to get rid of those then we're going to do A, select everything, and control N to recalculate the normals. Once that's done, we can tab into object mode, go to tools, and turn on smooth shading. This sphere is sticking out quite a bit too much, so what we're going to do is select a face here and shift select a face here. Do control L, so you should have this outer ring in this part as well. And then you can do S and Y to scale it on the Y axis and make it so that it's not having as much curvature here. And then we're just going to bring it back a bit. We're going to do 3 for side view and Z for wireframe. We actually want the front of this to not be sticking out past this area here. So we're going to bring this back a bit so it's just behind this part right here. Next we're going to Alt right click on this edge loop here we're going to do shift D to duplicate right click to cancel and we're going to bring this forward probably about to here should be fine then we're going to do shift H to hide everything else we're going to switch to edge select we're going to select one of these edges like this we're going to go to select and choose edge rings that's going to get all the edges that are pointing in the direction that we want then we're going to do select and checker deselect so we have every other edge selected. Now we're going to do control B to do a bevel and do a small bevel. Something like that should be fine. And now what we want is the edge that's to the left of this point and then we want to the left on each one of these. So we're going to have to do this manually. We're just going to select the edge that's on the left, hold shift and right click to select the rest of these edges that are on this side so just continue holding shift and right clicking until you get all the edges that are on the same side once you've done that we can bring them backwards some next what we want to do is do select and do edge rings again and this time we want to deselect the edges that are in the center. So these one, this one edge that's by itself, you have these two edges here and two edges here and then this one that's by itself. We're going to deselect the one that's by itself. So we're going to hold shift and deselect that one and then continue along the entire circle here. Deselecting the one that's by itself. until you have all of them deselected. Then we're going to do control B to do a bevel. We're going to mouse wheel up once and we're going to do a small bevel here and that should be fine. Then we're going to switch to vertex select. We're going to do control I. That's going to invert the selection. It's going to get the edges that we just barely deselected and then we're going to pull them back some so that this is more of a straighter surface here something like that should be fine and now we're going to tab into object mode and take a look at this detailing it's looking pretty good from here another thing you can do is in edit mode do alt h to unhide everything go to face select go to the back here i'm actually just going to press a to deselect everything and you could alt right click on this and do three for side view z for wireframe and bring this forward a bit to match up better with your detailing if you want to so it's not so far back but that's kind of an optional step because you're not going to see that anyway then the last thing I did was go to vertex select alt right click here shift D to duplicate right click to cancel E to extrude right click to cancel bring this back and then we're going to do control L control N to recalculate the normals then mesh normals and flip normals tab into object mode and turn on smooth shading the only reason I made that part a different piece is because it's it has a black color I believe on that piece so it's different than this other part so that's why it's a separate piece 
then if you want to, if you see you have some gaps here and you want them to be smaller, you can go into edit mode, select the vertex here, select the vertex over here as well on this outer piece. Do control L to select both of these pieces and then do S to scale them up slightly. You don't want this light to be as big as the outer part, but you can have it just a little bit smaller if you want it to be a little bit smaller. So this is looking pretty good for a starting point. We're just going to save this. You're going to want to go to file and do save as and give it a different name so you're not saving over the startup file. So go to save as, give it a different name. I've already done that and save your blender file. Thank you to our awesome Patreon supporters. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter yourself, head on over to patreon.com slash Thank you for your support.